regardless of what anyone may hear with regard to rumors, I think, if nothing else, I hope the people of the state, whether you are a resident, a, an employee, an employer, a public official, or the federal government, that you understand what our state laws are. And our state laws essentially say that we want to protect people's rights to privacy. And we want to protect their ability to go about their business, going to work, feeding their kids. But I think it's important, given these rumors that are out there, to let people know, and more specifically today, employers know that if they voluntarily start giving up information about their employees or access to their employees in ways that contradict our new California laws, they subject themselves to actions uh, by my office or local prosecutors in um, enforcing AB 450. How's everybody doing? My name is Anthony Brian Logan, and today we got to talk about what you just saw. If you're not quite sure what's going on, if you need me to explain it a little bit more, we're going to do that in this article once we get into it. And you see the article behind me. You see the headline over my left hand shoulder here. It says we will prosecute employers who help immigration sweeps. California Attorney General says now the guy in the video that was the California Attorney General. His name is Xavier Becerra, B-E-C-E-R-R-A. If I'm pronouncing his name wrong, please let me know in the comments below. But basically, in the video, he was talking about the new California law. I think it's the Immigration Workers Protection Act, something along those lines. We'll get to that a little bit later in the article. But basically, he's saying, look, if you are an employer and you help immigration, ICE, whatever it is, when it comes to your place to do an immigration sweep, you may be prosecuted. Let's get into the article to see exactly what the prosecution would be under what circumstances and how this law came into effect. And also my personal opinion about the law in general, how it discriminates against American citizens in favor of illegal immigrants. The state's top cop issued a warning to California employers Thursday that businesses face legal repercussions, including fines up to $10,000 if they assist federal immigration authorities with the potential widespread immigration crackdown. So basically if ICE comes to your job and says, Hey, we have uh, you know, probable cause that there's a lot of illegal aliens working for you. Let's see some papers. Let's see some identification. Let's see some proof of residence or whatever. There's going to be some, uh, you know, some barriers to prevent that from happening. And we'll get to those barriers at the end of the actual article. It's important, given these rumors that are out there, to let people know more specifically today, employers, that if they voluntarily start giving up information about their employees, or access to their employees in ways that contradict our new California laws, they subject themselves to actions by my office. State Attorney General Xavier Becerra said at a news conference, we will prosecute those who violate the law. So basically, that was from the actual video you saw earlier. Basically, if you have ICE, the federal people come to your place of business and they tell you to cooperate, you cannot if you don't want to face the California law. It's a weird situation. On one hand, if you cooperate with the federal authorities, you're violating California law. If you uphold California law, you're violating federal law. So you got a conflict right there. It's got to be a resolution. So th this, this is going to be a serious problem as we go forward. And the article continues. Becerra's warning comes as fear spread of mass workplace raids following reports that immigration agents plan to target Northern California communities for deportations due in part to the state's sanctuary law, which seeks to restrict local law enforcement agencies ability to cooperate with immigration authorities. Yes. California, I suppose, has officially become a sanctuary state. You know, I've heard rumors about the whole state being sanctuary. You know, I heard about San Francisco. That's how Kate Stanley unfortunately passed away because you had a guy we went to San Fran to be basically shielded from being deported, from being questioned about his status. So if you have that, that happened in one place that resulted in tragedy, imagine it across the entire state. That's a very big issue. It's a very big problem. And they're actually 
putting laws on the books to make that so. It's one thing to just have it like hush hush under the tape, but then you have a law that's going to be a, a very serious issue. Immigration and Customs Enforcement Acting Director Thomas Holman told a Fox News host earlier this month that, quote, California better hold on tight. If the politicians of California don't want to protect their communities, then ICE will, unquote, prompting a query from Senators Dianne Feinstein and Kamala Harris to brief them on how raids are prioritized. Now, shout out to my man, Thomas Holman, for saying that ICE is going to protect people because that's what it's all boils down to. It's not about trying to be insensitive or whatever. It's about, look, you have lawbreakers in your state that are allowed to run amok. You don't know who they are. They may be, as Barack Obama so eloquently said, fruit pickers and bed makers. He did say that. I'm not making it up. They may be who are over here illegally, but you also have criminal aliens, game bangers, drug runners, drug addicts, all kind of people that make society worse off. So it's about protecting communities, not trying to disenfranchise them or so-called break families up. Uh, like, like that guy, that guy's almost like 40 years old who in 30 years did not become a citizen. He was on a view and they asked him, why didn't he try to get, you know, become a citizen before? And he had no answer. He was happy with his illegal status. A lot of them are. You could pretty much fly under the radar and do whatever you want to do, make plenty of money, send them back to Mexico or whatever you want to do. But I'm getting off topic, so I'm going to digress. But Sarah repeatedly referred to the reports as, quote, rumors, unquote, and said the State Department of Justice was not aware of planned sweeps targeting Northern California in particular. But Sarah said the State Department of Justice and the State Labor Commissioner's Office plan to issue formal guidance to all California employers public and private, notifying them of their responsibilities under a new state law called the Immigrant Worker Protection Act, signed by Governor Jerry Brown, who was a clown, last year that took effect January 1st. It seeks to prevent all workers, regardless of immigration status, from being detained at workplaces. So my thing is this, okay, if it's not even about immigration status and they can't be detained at all, what about actual criminals, people that commit crime, people that are suspected of crimes? I mean, they, they could be here illegally. What if you got somebody that's, you know, suspected of having somebody, you know, a 13 year old tied up in their basement? It's, it's really weird. I don't understand. I do understand. But I don't understand why anybody would allow this to go forward while these people are protecting criminal aliens, protecting criminals in general. At the expense of just a regular everyday hardworking American. I did a video about California potentially breaking up into, you know, two states, uh, California, which would be, you know, the coastal liberal, you know, San Francisco, L.A. And then basically everywhere outside of that, the more rural places that are away from the extremely liberal coast. In that video, I showed the tent cities, sprawling tent cities that are in Orange County, which is right next to L.A. County. I was shocked. I was totally shocked. They do not only exist in L.A. County, Skid Row, Orange County by Anaheim Stadium. They exist all over California. And many of these tent cities are filled by American citizens. So I'm like, OK, what are we doing? Why are we trying to protect illegal aliens when you have American citizens, veterans, regular hardworking pe people that have jobs on the street with nowhere to live. It's crazy. Back to the article, though. Authored by San Francisco Democratic Assemblyman. <laughs> there you go. San Francisco right there. David Chu, the bill. Now, here is the meat and potatoes of the actual bill. This is what the bill actually has in it. The first thing is it requires employers to ask immigration agents for a warrant before granting access to a work site. So if you want to do a raid, you see what's going on now you got to have a warrant. I go through all kind of red tape. The second thing, it prevents employers from voluntarily sharing confidential employee information without a subpoena, requires employers to notify their workers before a federal audit of employee records, gives their attorney general and labor commissioner exclusive authority to enforce new provisions of state labor laws. Wow, <laughs> that's crazy. Prohibits employers from re-verifying information on employment verification forms unless compelled to do so by federal law. Now, this is really crazy. This is just a way all, all these rules right here over my left hand shoulder is a way for California to basically be a sanctuary state on the books officially. And it's really a shame that has to come down to this. The federal law 
should be the law of the land. When you're talking about immigration, if you're coming into the country illegally, you're here illegally. It doesn't matter what state you're in. You're in the USA illegally. Now, if California wants to break away from the union, that's something else. At that point, they can just be free from all federal laws. It seems like that's what they want to do. They don't want to have the federal laws really apply to them. They want to do whatever they want to do. Some of this may be done to spite Trump. I, you know, I see some petty stuff like that from these lawmakers, these so-called leaders in the community, whatever it is. They want to do things that are just done to spite Trump. It doesn't matter if their own citizens are hurt, which are hurting right now. Like I said about those 10 cities sprung with American citizens, yet people that come here illegally get all kinds of subsidies, Section 8, cash, uh, EBT, WIC, TANF, whatever kind of program is available, they get all that. But regular American people don't. I don't understand how that makes any sense. You know, it, it really doesn't. It may make sense in the mind of people that just want to look good for people. They want to go to L.A. and these Hollywood parties, San Francisco. They want to go to their workplace, Apple, Google, whatever kind of uber liberal tech company is there. They want to look good in front of their peers. But the average Californian is suffering as a result. I was totally appalled at the conditions of California, the tent cities. Look, you know, I've been on the East Coast, New York, Baltimore, D.C., whatever. You know, I got family right in Southeast D.C. I've never seen anything like those, those tent cities before in my life. I've seen some poverty, some real crime written areas. But what I saw in California was appalling right next to a major baseball stadium, Anaheim. It's really a shame. It's really a mess. Uh, Governor Jerry Brown, the attorney general, Xavier Becerra, Becerra, whatever his name is. These people need to focus on regular everyday citizens that live in america keyword citizens your immigration status it does matter if you're not here legally then you're not a citizen all these handouts in-state tuition money all, everything that's given to the illegal immigrants is no more than a magnet to draw them there and the more of them that come there the more that american citizens suffer don't you think that american citizens need that housing that many illegals are occupying with Section 8. They're occupying with special vouchers. Don't you think that Americans need those jobs that illegals are getting under the table? You know, they're not paying any kind of taxes. They're sending money back to their country of origin. Don't you think we need that rather than them? Wouldn't that be the more appropriate place for that cash to be? But what do you think? Do you think that I'm wrong with my assertion? Do you think that um, the so-called... What they want to call it, uh, the, the dreamers, the undocumented workers, should they be the ones who are protected more than American citizens? And if you think that way, please explain to me why in the comments below. I'd love to hear it. Or do you think that I'm correct that these rules over my left hand shoulder are just a way to undermine the American citizen? Some would say that it's to protect the so-called, you know, immigrant worker from undue harassment or whatever. But look. As I close, if you're here illegally, you're not subject to any kind of American. Uh, you're not subject to the Constitution. As far as I know, if you're here illegally, look, you're here illegally. You need to go back to your country of origin. That's just what that is. But whatever your comments are, please let me know in the comments below. And that's all I got to say for this video. If you like what you heard, please comment, rate, share and subscribe. Peace.